Hi guys. Well, here we are. CBS is uh, finally starting. This is my first real uh, time to talk to you about the Bible. It'll be brief this time because there's something I want you to watch. But uh, here's our opportunity to look at the Gospel of John. I want to just begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for the glorious Gospel that you have revealed to us through the writing of John. And now I pray, God, that you would make this book come alive to us and deepen our faith in Jesus Christ, not only today, but throughout this whole uh, class, this season. Father, help us with the limitations of this way of communicating, this way of teaching and learning. To, we wish so much we could be together, but Lord, this is not a hindrance to you. Jesus could walk through walls. So I pray that you would walk through the walls of our homes and meet us as we study the word together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Gospel of John, it's an amazing book. Um, there isn't really another book like it in the whole Bible. You know, in one way, it's a very simple book. We often tell people who've never read the Bible, why don't you start with the Gospel of John? It's uh, not all easy, but it's so uh, compelling. It was written to be a way of bringing someone to faith in Jesus. But on the other hand, uh, it's complicated. You know, when I took Greek in seminary, we studied John because it's Greek is the easiest in the New Testament. He used simple words and simple structures. It was easy for a beginner to read. And yet, the more I read it, the more deep I find it to be. Uh, I think of it like a work of art, really. Here's John, who was a fisherman, unschooled. And yet, when he comes to write this book, it is assembled like a great cathedral. You know, you walk into those cathedrals and you look around, you're struck with the, the elegance and the beauty of them. But the more you think about it, the engineering that it took to put up those buttresses, to uh, co conceive of these stained glass windows, to uh, imagine the architecture, the layout, all of that is amazing. Well, John is like that. You walk into it and it's straightforward in a way, but the more you study it, the more beautiful and complex and amazing it is as a work of art, let alone that these are the words of Scripture. This is God talking to us. As you have read, I hope by now, in the introductory chapter of our book, it's, it's ingenious in its structure. For one thing, there are all those sevens. We'll talk about that in a minute, and you've read about it. It's a key part of this book. And there are these um, deep ideas, uh, just the way it begins. In the beginning was the Word. What is that? Nobody talks like that. What does that mean? Or I was, uh, I was taken with the, uh, uh, the idea of glory in John. The word glory or glorify, those words appear 24 times in this book. It's a big idea. And here's a word that we never really use. Uh, we Maybe in sports, but uh, when Jesus says, I've come to glorify the Father, the Father will glorify me. What is that? What does that actually mean? Well, it's going to be an interesting thing for us to study. As you probably have already read, John tells us why he wrote this book. Other books aren't so easy to find the main theme. John's theme is very easy because he tells us right near the end of, uh, of his book. In John chapter 20, he says, uh, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. Okay, well, why did you record what you did record? Here's why. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and, by, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. He's not just writing to inform us. He's in, uh, writing to give us life. Now you might say, well, I already believe this. I already believe in Jesus, so now what does this book have to offer? Well, faith is something that grows and deepens and develops. And what we're going to find as we study John is that our confidence in Christ, our wonder at his accomplishments, at who he is, those sorts of things are all going to grow deeper. 
they'll be broader. Uh, John's writing not only kindles faith in Jesus, but it fuels it. And that's why it's going to be so beneficial for us to study it together. Whether this is a book that's relatively new to you or a book that you've known all your life. Now, one obvious question, if you've read the New Testament, is you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Maybe you've noticed that those other three books are very much alike, and John isn't like the other three. We call the three Gospels, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, the synoptic Gospels. Synoptic means they look the same, and they are. In fact, uh, what Mark has written appears in almost verbatim, sometimes literally verbatim, in Matthew and Luke. They, those three sort of feed off each other. But John is completely different. He has, uh, he has some of the same material that appears in uh, the other Gospels, but not written the same way. He doesn't quote them at all. Um, we have those sevens. John organizes his books around these seven things. They're seven signs. Now in John, when he records a miracle, he records seven, actually eight, because there's one in the epilogue. Each of those seven, it'll say this is a sign. That is, it means more than meets the eye. When Jesus turned the water to wine at the wedding feast, his first miracle, it was a sign of something more than his ability to turn water to wine. When he raised Lazarus from the dead, it was a sign. We have those signs. Then we have dialogues or conversations, which are all key to the book, and there's seven of them. He has a conversation with Nicodemus. He has a, 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 in, at night, he has a conversation with the woman at the well. There's seven of those. Each of those are key teaching times. They're not just a passing conversations that we might read about in other Gospels. And then you have the seven I Ams of Jesus. You'll remember that in the Old Testament, God told, him, uh, called, told Moses at the burning bush, I am. Moses said, what's your name? God said, my name is I am. So when Jesus seven times says, I am the bread of life, I am the gate to the sheepfold, he is drawing on that and his listeners, his Jewish listeners caught it. We don't, we don't think of it that way, but they did and they thought, this man is blaspheming. He's saying he's God. Now John does give historic details. Uh, here, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, these are some of the accounts of things that happened. This is a list of things that are only recorded in John. They don't appear in any of the other Gospels. Uh, here are some things that aren't in John at all. And here are a few things that happen in all four Gospels. Main accounts, like the feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle that appears in all four of the Gospels. John doesn't have the same focus that the other Gospels have on um, sequence and sort of historical process. He is organizing his material in different ways. Not that they're out of sequence, but they're not as important. John also writes mostly about Jesus' ministry when he was in Judea, the southern part of Israel, around Jerusalem, whereas the other Gospels write mostly about his work in Galilee, up around the Sea of Galilee, a different place. These are just different perspectives that they each bring to the, to the Gospels. Uh, John has a focus much more vividly and uh, significantly on the deity and the inward life of Jesus. We are taken with him into prayer. We hear him speaking of our own abiding in him, like a branch and a vine. There are, um, the, the, right from the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. These are dramatic statements about the deity of Christ, and that is driven home. And remember, his, his goal is that you're going to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Uh, he will take us into some key doctrines, we'll get into this later, that we don't really see in the other Gospels nearly so vividly. 
um, this, the second coming, I'm going to prepare a place for you and I will come again and receive you to, to myself. His teaching about the Holy Spirit is dramatically fuller than anything we're going to read anywhere else in the Gospels. So we're coming to that. Well, there's a lot more I could say, but I would like to ask you to watch um, two videos. I'd like you to go on your, I'll send this in your email, but I would like you to go on your computer to a, a website called bibleproject.com, bibleproject.com, and then go to slash explore and slash John. You can just search for John. Here it is again, bibleproject.com, explore John. And you're going to see there two m videos of about eight minutes each. These are amazing for the way they sketch out for you the flow of this gospel. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. I watch these, I go, why would I try to say anything when you could watch something that is so interesting and entertaining and, and comprehensive? You may want to watch it more than once because it goes by quickly and it's amazing to see this cathedral that John has built. Now, so please watch that this week. Before we go, I just want to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen next week, just in terms of getting to into these Zoom meetings. Here, here I am on Zoom. This is what you're going to see next week, uh, this pretty face. And I want you to notice that if you, when you tune in, down along the bottom of your screen, there are some, uh, some icons. One of them that I've circled here says chat. You can click on chat and the screen will change. And over here, you'll see this white space. And at the bottom, you can type a message. So you could say, uh, uh, I'm, I'm loving this guy, Lee. What a, what, man, he's the cat's pajamas. You could write, I can't hear what's going on. And, and uh, one of us can type you back a, a response. Here you can say who this is for. It can be to everybody who's watching, everybody in the class. I love this guy, Lee. Or it could just be to the host. Um, I can't hear, how do I, what's wrong with my volume? And when you write a message, then we can write you back. Uh, Tom Ewing, our coordinator, uh, can uh, kind of interact with you during, right during the Zoom meeting. Uh, to go to uh, Fisher, if you're, you probably are familiar with Fisher, that is the website of Community Bible Study. And when you go to fisher.communitybiblestudy.org, fisher.communitybiblestudy.org, you'll get a sign-in screen. You put your email and the password that you've given, uh, you've assigned to yourself, and sign in. And when you do, you'll get a screen that looks like this. It says your class at the top, It'll show like lesson one, and I believe this is where we'll be able to post the video lesson recorded. So uh, what, we, what I teach next week, we'll be able to tape that on Zoom and then post it here. So if you miss it or you want to see it again because you just can't believe how great this guy is, you can go do that. Also, one other thing that was interesting to me is... Over here on the far side, where it says there's a blue marker that says, uh, or link that says answer study questions. If you'd prefer to do your study questions online, that's where you click. And the screen will come up that looks kind of like a little Word document. You can type your answers there, save them, and uh, work off your computer instead of from the book. Well, that's some instructions. Um, when you sign in to Fisher next week, you'll get an email from us. It'll have a link. It'll take you to the Zoom meeting. You go there. Your name will pop up when you get on. Tom will make sure you get uh, funneled to your proper breakout group or a core group. That's what they call them in Zoom, breakout groups. So that when after we do a little introductory comment, you can go to your breakout group and have your discussion there. There they will see your faces. You can talk to each other. And then we'll give you a signal when it's time for that to come to an end. You'll wrap it up and we'll bring you back into a session right here where I'll be teaching you right from my home. So that's the plan. I hope it all works. We're all trying to figure this out. But I look forward to uh, connecting with you. You can always write to me. Uh, my email is there. It's just my name, leeecklove at gmail.com. 
Uh, I'd love to interact with you if you have questions or problems or anything like that. All right, so we uh, get your work done and we will see you uh, next Tuesday night.